Mr. Burns Mantle. To follow Barry's Peter Pan with Maeterlinck's The Bluebird is to follow one children's classic with another. In a series of great plays designed to entertain and inform the whole family, that seemed the wise thing to do. Maeterlinck, whom you probably have seen referred to as the Belgian mystic, or perhaps as the Belgian Shakespeare, is not the Barry type of dreamer at all. The Belgian is much more profound. But when he is dealing with a fairy story adventure told by children, as he is in The Blue Bird, he too can be simple and direct and altogether charming. Metterlink is another of the world's great dramatists who came to the theater after he had studied law. He was in his late twenties when he took to writing. Born in Ghent, Belgium, 77 years ago of Flemish ancestry, he naturally inherited a vast respect for the mysticism of the Middle Ages. His schooling was religious and his bent poetic. From the first he preferred to work with symbols, exciting the imagination by giving body and soul to thoughts and moods. A little puzzling to you and to me perhaps, but quite simple to the true Metterlinkians. In The Blue Bird, he is telling the story of two dreaming children who, with the aid of a fairy god's diamond, brought the whole world to life, including the food they ate and the light by which they saw that world. The cat, who was not to be trusted, and the dog, who was just naturally a great friend of man, were their intimates. Metterlink did not care greatly for the conventions of the theater and not at all for the average play of commerce. His thought was deeper than that. Once he wrote, I have come to believe that an old man seated in his armchair, waiting patiently, interpreting without comprehending, submitting with bent head to the presence of his soul and his destiny, does yet live in reality a deeper, more human and more universal life than the lover who strangles his mistress, the captain who conquers in battle, or the husband who avenges his honor. Metterlink the mystic has been content to let those who would worry about what his meanings might be. He knows, and a large number of his followers have pretended to know, and he is content. He has written some of the most beautiful passages known to the drama. In one way, he is the perfect dramatist for radio. In our armchair playhouse, we don't have to worry about the scenery or pretend that we recognize all the strange people and scenes paraded on the stage. We can sit back, close our eyes, and let our imaginations fill in the pictures more beautifully. It isn't hard to visit the land of memory or the realm of night or the kingdom of the future in this playhouse. So now we start with the woodcutter's little boy and girl in a search for the bluebird of happiness. Mittle and Tittle are their names. As our fairy story begins, they seem to have just awakened from a sound sleep. Middle, Tilltil, are you asleep? Are you? No, how can I be asleep when I'm talking to you? Say, is this Christmas Day? Not yet, not until tomorrow. But Father Christmas won't bring us anything this year. Why not? I heard Mommy say that she couldn't go to town to tell him. But he'll come next year. Is next year far off? Good long while. But he'll come to the rich children tonight. Really? Uh-huh. Hello, Mommy's forgotten to put out the lamp. Hey, I have an idea. What? Let's get up. Oh, but we mustn't. Well, there's no one about. Do you see the shutters? Oh, how bright they are. It's the lights of the party. What party? The rich children opposite. It's the Christmas tree. Let's open the shutters. Can we? Of course, there's no one to stop us. Do you hear the music? Let's get up. We can see everything from this window. I see the tree. What tree? By the Christmas tree. Oh, I say, what lots and lots of lights. And what are those people doing who are making such a noise? They're the musicians. Are they angry? No, but it's hard work. And what's that all around the table? Cakes and fruit and tarts. I had some once when I was little. So did I. It's nicer than bread, but they don't give you enough. What's that? It's Daddy. Or the bird that is blue. We have some grass, but it can't sing. Tilton has a bird. But I can't give it away. Why not? Because it's mine. Well, that's a reason, no doubt. Where is the bird? In the cage. I don't want it. It's not blue enough. You'll have to go and find me the one I want. But I don't know where it is. No more do I. That's why you must look for it. I must absolutely have the blue bird. It's for my little girl who's very ill. What's the matter with her? We don't quite know. She wants to be happy. Really? Do you know who I am? Well, you're rather like our neighbor, Madame Berlingo. Not a bit. There's not the least likeness. This is intolerable. I'm the fairy berry loon. Oh, very well. You will have to start at once. Are you coming with us? I can't because I put on the soup this morning and it always boils over if I leave it. Will you go out through the ceiling, up the chimney, or by the window? Well, I'd rather go out the door. That's quite impossible, and it's a shocking habit. We'll go out through the window. Well, what are you waiting for? Get dressed at once. 
I'll help Mitchell. We have no shoes. It doesn't matter. I'll give you a little magic hat. Where are your father and mother? They're asleep in there. And your grandpapa and grandmama? They're dead. Would you like to see them again? Oh, yes, at once. Show them to us. I haven't got them in my pocket. But this is very lucky. You will see them when you go through the land of memory. It's on the way to the Bluebird, just on the left, past the third turning. What were you doing when I knocked? We were playing at eating cakes. Have you any cakes? Where are they? In the house with the rich children. Come and look, it's so lovely. It's no more beautiful there than here. Oh, it's darker here and smaller, and there are no cakes. It's exactly the same, only you can't see. Yes, I can, and I have very good eyes. I can see the time on the church clock, and Daddy can. I tell you that you can't see. How do you see me? Perhaps you'll say I have a hump. Oh, no, no. It's not a big one. Oh, yes, to look at you, anyone would think it's enormous. Have I a hooked nose, and have I lost one of my eyes? No, I don't say that. Who put it out? But it's not out, you wretched, impudent boy. It's much finer than the other. Human beings are very odd. Since the death of the fairies, they see nothing at all, and they never suspect it. Now, what am I taking out of my bag? Oh, it's a little green hat. What's that shining in the cockade? That's the big diamond that makes people see. Really? Yes. When you've got the hat on your head, you turn the diamond a little, like this. Do you see? It opens your eyes at once, and you see even the inside of things. The soul of bread, of wine, of pepper. Can you see the soul of sugar, too? Of course you can. I hate unnecessary questions. Oh, oh, I was almost forgetting. Uh, when you hold the diamond like this, do you see? Mm -hmm. One little turn more, and you behold the past. Another little turn, and you behold the future. Oh. oh, but Daddy will take it from me. He won't see it. No one can see it as long as it's on your head. Will you try it? Uh -huh. Now, turn the diamond. <laughs> Who are all those pretty ladies coming out of the clock? Don't be afraid. They are the hours of your life, and they're glad to be free and visible for a moment. <laughs> Who's that big red fellow with a nasty smell? Shh, don't speak too loud. That's fire. He's dangerous. <laughs> good morning, good morning, my dear little god. At last, at last, we can talk. Bark and wag my tail as I might, you never understood. But now, good morning, good morning. I love you. Shall I do some of my tricks? Would you like to see me walk on my front paws and dance on my hind legs? Who is this gentleman with the dog's head? Don't you see? It's the soul of Tylo, whom you've set free. Good morning, miss. How well you look this morning. Good morning, sir. Who is it? Why, don't you see? It's the soul of Tillet, your cat, offering you his hand. Kiss him. Me too. I've kissed the little guard. I've kissed the little girl. I've kissed everybody. Oh, what fun we shall have. I'm going to frighten Tillet. <laughs> Sir, I don't know you. Keep still, will you? Or else you'll go back into silence until the end of time. And who's that wet lady? Don't be afraid. It's water just come from the tap. A sweet good day to you, little miss. What does he want? Why, he is the soul of sugar. Has he any barley sugar? His pockets are full of it, and each of his fingers is a sugar stick. <laughs> It's the queen. She broke the lamp. It's the blessed virgin. No, my children. It's light. Oh, well, that's daddy. He's heard us. Turn the diamond from left to right. Oh, not so quick. Oh, heavens, it's too late. You turned it too briskly. They will not have time to resume their places, and we shall have a lot of annoyance. <laughs> What's the matter, Bread? There's no room in the van. My little god, I am still here. I can still talk. I can still kiss you. Once more, once more, once more. What, you too? Are you there still? What luck. I was too late to return to silence. What is going to happen? Is there any danger? Well, I'm bound to tell you the truth. All those who accompany the two children will die at the end of the journey. Oh, come, come, let us go back. No, 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 I won't. I want to go with the little god. I want to talk to him all the time. Idiot. <laughs> to die at the end of the journey. I want to get back at once into my bag. Oh, I can't find my chimney. I can't get into the tap. I burst my packing paper. Oh, goodness me, what fools they are. Fools and cowards, too. So you would rather go on living in your ugly boxes, in your taps, than accompany the children in search of the bird? Yes, yes, yes. yes. My, 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 my chimney. And you, Light. What do you say? I will go with the children. I, too. I, too. That's right. Besides, it's too late to go back. You have no choice now. You must all start with us. But you, Fire, don't come near anybody. You, Dog, don't tease the cat. And you, Water, hold yourself up and try not to run all over the place. There's Daddy again. He's getting up this time. I can hear him walking. Let us go out by the window. You shall all come to my palace where I will dress the animals and the things properly. You, Bread, take the cage in which to put the bluebird. It will be in your charge. Quick! Let's waste no time. This 
way. I know every inch of the fairy's palace. Let us make the most of our last minute of liberty while the children in light pay their visit to the fairy's little daughter. Now, I have brought you here in order to discuss the position in which we are placed. Are we all here? I see the dog coming out of the fairy's wardrobe. What on earth has he got on? He has put on the livery of one of the footmen of Cinderella's coach. It was just the thing for him. He has the soul of a flunky. Strange how I mistrust him. He'd better not hear what I have to say to you. It's too late. He's discovered us. Look, here's water also coming out of the wardrobe. Goodness me, how fine she is. There, there. Aren't we fine? Just look at these laces and this embroidery. It's real gold and no mistake. That catskin's color of time dress, I seem to recognize it. Yes, this is the one that suited me best. Oh, she's not brought her umbrella. What's that? Oh, nothing, nothing. Well, I thought you might be speaking of a great red nose I saw the other day. Oh, come, come, come. Don't let's quarrel. We have more important things to do. We're only waiting for bread. Where is he? He was making an endless fuss about choosing his dress. Worthwhile, isn't it, for a fellow who looks like a fool and carries an enormous stomach? At last, he decided in favor of a Turkish robe adorned with gems, a scimitar, and a turban. There he is. He has put on Bluebeard's finest dress. Well, 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 what do you think of this, eh? How nice he looks. What a fool he looks. How nice he looks. How nice he looks. Are the children dressed? Yes, but the great thing was the dressing of light. Why? The fairy thought her so lovely that she didn't want to dress her at all. Thereupon, I protested in the name of our dignity as a essential and eminently respectable elements. And I ended by declaring that under those conditions, I should refuse to be seen oh, with come, her. Come, 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 I... stop chattering. Our future is at stake. You have heard the fairy has just said that the end of the journey will mark the end of our lives. It is our business, therefore, to prolong it as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, the cat is right. Yeah. Now listen to me. All of us here present, animals, things, and elements possess a soul which man does not yet know. But if he finds the bluebird, he will know all, he will see all, and we shall be completely at his mercy. It is to our interest, therefore, at all costs, to prevent the finding of that bird, even if we have to go so far as to endanger the lives of the children themselves. What's the fellow saying? Just say that again, will you, to see if I heard right. Order, order! Who made you chairman? Hold your tongue, fire. What are you interfering with? I shall interfere where I choose, and I want none of your remarks. Uh, don't let's quarrel. This is a serious moment. I quite agree with Sugar and the cat. This is ridiculous. There is man, and that is all. We have to obey him and do as he tells us. Man forever. In life or death, all for man. Man is God. No, I quite agree with the dog. But at least give us your reasons. There are no reasons. I love man, and that is enough. Excuse me, let us not embitter the discussion. There is something to be said on both sides. Oh, I quite agree with Sugar. Are we not, all of us, water, fire, and you yourself, bread, and the dog, the victims of a nameless tyranny? Oh, look out. I see fairy and light coming. Light has taken sides with man. She is our worst enemy. Baker, as you would me. The discipline and everyone to his post. I was ready for tomorrow's symbols at the blue parents. Are they there in the land of memory? You shall see them at once. But how can we see them when they're dead? How can they be dead when they live in your memory? Men do not know this secret because they know so little. We are about to see that the dead who are remembered live as happily as though they were not dead. Is light coming with us? No, it is more proper that this visit should be confined to the family. I would appear indiscreet. They did not invite me. Which way are we to go? Over there. You are on the threshold of the land of memory. But don't forget that you're to be back, both of you, by half past eight. It's extremely important. Now mind and be puffed if you are late. Goodbye for the present. Come catch your dog, light bread. Come this way. And the little ones that way. Why, it's Granddad and Granny sitting by their cottage. Yes, yes. <laughs> I have a notion our grandchildren who are still alive are coming to see us today. They are certainly thinking of us. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, what did I tell you? I was sure they would come Till, today. Till, Till, it's you. How are Daddy and Mummy Till? Quite well, Granny. They were asleep when we went out. <laughs> Why don't you come to see us oftener? Makes us so happy. We couldn't, Granny, and today it's only because of the fairy. We're always here waiting for a visit from those who are alive. Oh, they come so seldom. Last time you were here was on All Hallows, when the church bells were ringing. All oh, Hallows? Mm -hmm. We didn't go out that day, for we both had very bad colds. No, 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 but, but you thought of us. Yes, well, every time you think of us, we wake up and see you again. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> Is it nice here? Oh, yes, not bad, not bad. And if one could just have a smoke... Aren't you allowed to smoke? Oh, yes, it's allowed, but I have broken my pipe. Oh, you haven't changed, Granddad, not a bit. And Granny hasn't changed a bit either. Oh, but you're both better looking. Well, we feel all right. 
we have stopped growing older. <laughs> oh, nothing has changed. Everything is in its old place. Only everything is prettier. Oh, there's the clock with the big hand which I broke the point off of. And here's the old blackbird. Does he still sing? <laughs> he's blue. Oh, well, that's the bird, the blue bird, which I'm to take back to the ferry. Oh, he's blue, blue, blue as a blue glass marble. Granddad, Granny, will you give him to me? Yes, perhaps, perhaps. Uh, what do you think, Granny? Oh, certainly, certainly. I'll what put him in my cage. Was? How pleased the fairy will be, and light too. Mind you, I won't answer for the bird. I'm afraid that he will never get used again to the restless life up there, and it'll come back here by the first wind that blows this way. However, we shall see. Oh, what is that? I don't know, I'm sure. It must be the clock in the cottage. Oh, it can't be. It never strikes. Because we no longer think of the time. Was anyone thinking of the time? Yes, I was. What is the time? I'm sure I can't tell. I've forgotten how. It struck eight times. So I suppose it's what they call eight o'clock up there. Well, I'd expect me at half past eight. It's because of the ferry. It's extremely important. Come on, Middle, we've only just got time. And goodness gracious, how tiresome the living are with all their business and excitement. Goodbye, Granddad. Goodbye, Granny. Oh, don't don't cry, cry, Granny. We'll come back often. It's our only pleasure. It's such a treat for us when your thoughts visit us. We have no other amusements. Oh, quick, quick, my cage, my bird. Here they are. You know, I, I don't want him. And if he's not the right color... Goodbye, goodbye. 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 It's this way, Middle. Where is light? I don't know. Oh, the bird is no longer blue. Look, he's turned black. Give me your hand, little brother. I feel so frightened and so cold. Who goes there in my palace of night? It is I, the cat mother night. I'm worn out. Why, what's the matter, child? You look pale and thin, and you're splashed with mud to your very whiskers. Oh, mother night, I've managed to escape for a moment to warn you, but I greatly fear there's nothing to be done. Why, what's the matter? I've told you of little Tiltil, the woodcutter's son and of the magic diamond. Well, he is coming here to demand the blue bird of you. He hasn't got it yet. He will have it soon, unless we perform some miracle. Oh, dear, oh, dear, I never have a moment's peace. I cannot understand man these last few years. Must he absolutely know everything? Oh, I know, Mother Night, I know. The, the times are hard and we are almost alone in our struggle against man, but I hear them coming. I see only one way. As they are children, we must give them such a fright that they will not dare to persist or to open the great door at the back behind which they would find the birds of the moon. The secrets of the other caverns will be enough to distract their attention and to terrify them. Are there many of them? It is nothing. It is our friends, bread and sugar. Water is not very well, and fire could not come because he is related to light. The dog is the only one who is not on our side. But it is never possible to keep him away. Oh, this way, little master, this way. I have told Knight, who is delighted to see you. Uh, good day, Mrs. Knight. Good day. Huh, I'm not used to that. You might say good night, or at least uh, good evening. Oh, I, I beg your pardon, ma'am. I didn't know. But let's talk of something else. The cat tells me that you've come here to look for the bluebird. Yes, ma'am, if you'll allow me. Will you tell me where he is? I don't know, dear. All I can say is that he's not here. I have never seen him. Light told me that he was here, and Light knows what she's saying. Will you hand me your keys? But you must understand, my dear, that I cannot give my keys like that to the first comer. I have the keeping of all nature's secrets, and I'm absolutely forbidden to deliver them to anybody, especially to a child. You have no right to refuse them to man when he asks you for them. I know that. Who told you? Light. Light again. Always light. How dare she interfere? How dare she? Shall I take them from her by force, my little god? Hold your tongue, Tylo. Keep quiet and try to behave. Come, madam. Give me your keys, please. Well, have you the sign at least? Behold. The diamond. Hmm. Well, then, here is the key that opens all the doors of the hall. But I will not be responsible. Uh, is it dangerous? Dangerous. All around the hall, in each of those basalt caves, are all the evils, all the plagues, all the sicknesses, and all the terrors that have afflicted life since the beginning of the world. You've seen what happens when one of them escapes and shows itself on Earth. Might permit me to ask you a question? Certainly. In case of danger, which is the way of escape? There is no way of escape. Now, let's begin here. What's behind this bronze door? I think it is the ghosts. It's long since I opened the door and since they came out. I'll see. Quick, quick, shut the door. They'll all escape and we'll never be able to catch them again. Help me catch them. Here, 
Here, help her, Tyler, help them. Whoa, 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 Here, this way goes. Tyler. Open the door a little. There. Help there, that's Tyler. it. Uh, and these two, come quick in with you. You know you're only allowed out on all hollows. Well, what's behind this door? Open it if you like. It's the sicknesses. Must I be careful in opening? No, no, it's not worthwhile. They're very quiet, the poor little things. They're not happy. Man for some time has been waging such a determined war upon them. Open. You'll see. Don't they come out? Oh, they're all poorly and very much discouraged. The doctors are so unkind to them. The bluebird isn't there. Oh, they look very ill. Oh, look, there's a little one escaping. Which one is it? It's nothing. One of the smallest. It's cold in the head. It's one of those which are least persecuted and which enjoy the best of health. Come here, dear. It's too soon yet. You must wait for the winter. Let's look at this one. What's in here? Take care. It is the wars. Heaven knows what would happen if one of them escaped. I don't think that they have the bluebird. You may be sure they haven't. Well, have you had enough of it? It'll be worse presently if you go on. And behind this door... Is this terrible also? No. No, there's a little of everything here. It is where I keep the unemployed stars, my personal perfumes, and the song of the nightingales. Just so. The stars, the song of the nightingales. This must be the door. Open if you like. There's nothing very bad inside. Oh, what pretty ladies. Those are my stars. And how well they dance. And how sweet they smell. And how beautifully the nightingales sing. What are those whom one can hardly see? Those are the perfumes of my shadow. But enough. It's the devil's own business to get them back once they begin to dance. Now, stars, quick, quick, quick. Come in with you. Come in or I will go and fetch a ray of sunlight. Here's the great middle door. Do not open that one. Why not? Because it's not allowed. And it's here that the bluebird is hidden. Light told me so. Listen to me, child, and believe me. Relinquish your quest. Go no further. Do not tempt fate. Don't open that door. But why? Because not one of those, do you hear? Not one of those who have opened it has ever returned alive to the light of day. <laughs> don't do it, Master don't, dear. We're sacrificing the lives of all of us. I don't must open the door. Don't Run don't for your lives. Come quickly. At don't least wait until we're at the end the of the whole thing. I shall stay with my little god. I shall stay. That's right, Tyler. That's right. Kiss me. Oh, you and I are too. Now, steady. Oh, heaven. What a beautiful garden of dreams. And they're here. We have them at last. Thousands of bluebirds. Millions. Come, Middle, come, Tylo, help me. You can catch them by handfuls. They aren't shy, they aren't afraid of us. Well, oh, they fly into my hands. Look, they're eating the moonbeams, Middle. Don't bite them, Tylo, don't hurt them. Take them very gently. I have caught seven already. Oh, how they flap their wings. I can't hold them. Nor can I. I have too many of them. Tylo has some, too. Quick, let's go out this way. Light is waiting for us. Oh, please, she'll be. This way, this way. Come on, quick. Did they get him? The real bluebird. No, Mother Night. I see him up there on that moonbeam. They could not reach him. He kept too high. Uh. Well, have you caught him, Tiltil? Oh, yes. He has light as many as we wanted. Here they are. Oh, they're dead. Yours too, Middle? Tylo's also? Oh, this is too bad. Who killed them? I'm too unhappy. Do not cry, my child. <laughs> you didn't catch the one that is able to live in broad daylight. He has gone elsewhere. But we shall find him again. <laughs> the trees and animals here present in the dark forest greeting 
This is a great day, a day of days. Our enemy is coming to set free your energies and to deliver himself into your hands. It is Tiltil, the son of the woodcutter, who has done you trees so much harm. He can compel us to hand over the bluebird, and thenceforth we shall be definitely at man's mercy. We must take the opportunity. He must be done away with. Yes, he is with his little sister. She must die, too. Light alone is on man's side, but she won't come. I made the children believe that they ought to steal away while she was asleep. There never was such an opportunity, but hush. Here they are. Is this the place? Ah, there you are, my little master. How well you look and how pretty this evening. I have brought together here in the forest the principal animals of the country. You can see them already among the foliage. Oh, but why have you brought the dog? I've told you he is on the worst terms with everybody, even the trees. His odious presence will spoil... Ah, men! Little men! That is the oak, leaving his palace. He has the... A hat! It is the oak. Who are you? I'm Tiltil, sir. When can I have the bluebird? Tiltil. The woodcutter's son? Yes, sir. Your father has done us much harm. In my family alone, he has put to death 600 of my sons and 12,000 great-grandsons. I know nothing about it, sir. He didn't do it on purpose. What have you come here for? And why have you made our souls leave their abodes? I beg your pardon, sir, for disturbing you. The cat said that you would tell us where the bluebird was. Yes. I know that you are looking for the bluebird. That is to say, the great secret of things and of happiness, so that man may make our servitude still harder. Oh, no, sir. It's for the fairy berry loom's little girl who's very ill. Enough! We're all here present. You know, my brothers, the nature of our business. The child you see before you, thanks to the talisman stolen from the powers of Earth, is able to take possession of the bluebird and thus to snatch from us the secret which we have kept since the origin of life. It is a serious moment. The child must be done away with before it is too late. What is he saying? Do you see my teeth, you old cripple? Oh, the dog is insulting the oak. Is that the dog? Drive him out. We must suffer no traitors among us. Send the dog away. Send him away as quickly as you can. Will you be off? It will be a good thing to chain him up till Tillo. He will commit some folly. The trees will be angry and all will end badly. What can I do? I've lost his leash. Well, here's the ivy just coming along with strong bonds. Cat, you are at the bottom of all this. You sneak, you tiger, you Judas. You see, he insults everybody. Yes, one can't hear oneself speak. Mr. Ivy, will you chain him up, please? Won't he bite? Come along, you old ball of twine, you. Come along and see. Tylo! What am I to do, my little god? Lie down flat. Obey the ivy. Let him bind you. Hangman's rope. Look, my little god. He, he's cutting my paws. He's choking me. I don't care. It's your own fault. Hold your tongue and be quiet. You're wrong for all that. They mean mischief. Take care, my little god. He, he's closing my mouth. I can't do... Where shall we put him? I've muzzled him finely. He can't utter a word. Fasten him tight down there. Behind my trunk. To my big root. Is that done? Well, this is the first time that it is given to us to judge man and make him feel our power. Help! Help! Tallo! Tallo! Where's the cat? Tallo! To let! To let! Come! I've strained my paw. To let too many of them! Here! Tallo. Here, my little Tallo. dog! Don't be afraid! I know it through the ivy! Tallo. Here! There's one for you, bear, in your fat hands. Now then, who wants some more? Here, that's for the pig. Ow! Oh, that's the willow. She's broken my paw. Look out, it's the wolf! But help is coming. I heard them. I smell them. Where? Who? There, there, it's light. She's found us. Kiss me, my little king. We are saved. Look, they're retreating. They're afraid. Light, light, come quick. Hurry! What is it? What has happened? They've rebelled. They're all against us. But my poor boy, didn't you know? Turn the diamond. They will return into silence at once. There, you see? What was the matter with them? Were they mad? No, they're always like that. But we do not know it because we do not see it. I told you so before. It's dangerous to wake them when I am not there. Well, but for the dog and if I hadn't had my knife, I would never have believed that they were so wicked. You see that man is all alone against all this world. Are you very badly hurt, my little god? Oh, nothing serious. It's for middle, they haven't touched her. Oh, but you, my dear Tylo... Your mouth is all over blood and your paw is broken. It is not worth speaking of. It won't show tomorrow. But it was a tough fight. Oh, I, I should think so. Oh, the ox caught me a blow with his horns and the stomach and the oak broke my paw. I should like to know which one. My poor Tillette. Did he really? 
Where were you? I didn't see you. Oh, Mittel, my dear, I was wounded at the first while attacking that horrid pig who wanted to eat you. And then the oak gave me a great blow which struck me senseless. I want a word with you presently, cat, but it will keep. Mummy, dear, he's insulting me. He wants to hurt me. Leave him alone, will you? You want me beat? Now we are at the entrance to the enchanted palaces where all men's joys, all men's happinesses are gathered together in the charge of fate. Are there many of them? Are they little? Oh, some are little and some are great. Here come some amiable and curious joys who will direct us. Do you know them? Oh, yes, I know them all. There are many more happinesses on earth than people think. <laughs> oh, here are some little ones. How very pretty they are. They are the children's happiness. Can one speak to them? Oh, it would be no use. They sing, they dance, they laugh. But they do not talk yet. Besides, they're in a hurry, you see. There, yeah, they've already passed. They have no time to waste, for childhood is very short. How do you do, Tilda? Who are you? Don't you recognize me? Well, no, I, I don't know you. I don't remember seeing any of you. Here, do you hear? He has never seen us. <laughs> Why, my dear Tilda, I am the chief of the happinesses of your home. And all these are the other happinesses that live there. Then there are happinesses in my home? <laughs> you heard him? Why, you little wretch, it is crammed with happinesses in every nook and cranny. Let me introduce myself first. The happiness of being well at your service. I am not the prettiest, but I am the most important. This is the happiness of loving one's parents, who is always a little sad, because no one ever looks at him. Till, till, you might inquire about the bluebird. It is just possible that the chief happiness of your home knows where he is. Oh, yes. Where is he? He doesn't know where the bluebird is. No, I, I don't know. And there's nothing to laugh at. Oh, come, don't be angry and let us be serious. He doesn't know. Well, what do you expect? He is no more absurd than the majority of men. Oh, now the great joys are coming toward us. Oh, how beautiful they are. Why aren't they laughing? Aren't they happy? It is not when one laughs that one is really happy. Who are they? They are the great joys. Do you know their names? Of course. We often play with them. Here, first of all, before the others, is the great joy of being just. Behind her is the joy of being good. Who is the happiest? But the saddest. And there, far away in the golden clouds, the one whom I can hardly see when I stand as high as I can on tiptoe, that is the great joy of loving. You are ever so much too small to see her all together. What do the others want with us? Why are they standing aside? It is before a new joy who is arriving. Perhaps the purest that we have here. Who is it? Don't you recognize her yet? It is your mother's joy. It is the peerless joy of maternal love. Hildil and Metal. Into my arms, the two of you. Oh, there is nothing on earth that can give greater happiness. Tiltil, aren't you laughing? No, you are the metal. Don't you know your mother's love when you see it? Oh, you are like Mummy, but you're much prettier. Why, of course. I've stopped growing old. And every day brings me youth and happiness. Each of your smiles makes me younger by a year. And that beautiful dress of yours, what is it made of? Is it silk, silver, or pearls? No. It is made of kisses and caresses and loving looks. Each kiss you give me adds a ray of moonlight or of sunshine to it. How funny. I should never have thought that you were so rich. Where used you to hide it? Was it in the cupboard of which Daddy has the key? No, no, I always wear it. But people do not see it. Because people see nothing when their eyes are closed. All mothers are rich when they love their children. There are no poor mothers, no ugly ones, no old ones. And when they seem to be most unhappy, it needs but a kiss which they received or give to turn all their tears into stars. Why, oh, yes, it's true. Your eyes are filled with stars. They are really your eyes, only they're much more beautiful. Oh, it's wonderful, Mummy. You have the same voice also, but you speak much better than you do at home. At home, one has too much to do. There is no time. Do you understand, Tildil, dear? You believe yourself in heaven, but heaven is wherever you and I kiss each other. There are not two mothers, and you have no other. Every child has only one. And it is always the same one. Always the most beautiful. 
But you have to know her and know how to look. But how did you manage to come up here? To find a road which men have been seeking ever since they began to dwell upon the earth. She brought me. Who is she? Light. I have never seen her. I was told she was very fond of you both and very kind. But why does she hide herself? Does she never show her face? Oh, yes. But she's afraid that the joys might be frightened if they saw too clearly. Light. You have been very good to my poor little one. I shall always be good to those who love one another. in the kingdom of the future, in the midst of the children who are not yet born. We shall very probably find the bluebird here. Certainly the bird will be blue since everything here is blue. Oh, heaven, how beautiful it all is. Look at the children running up. Are they angry? Not at all. You can see they're smiling, but they are surprised. Live children! Come and look at the little live children! Why do they call us little live children? Because they themselves are not yet alive. What are they doing then? They are awaiting the hour of their birth. The hour of their birth? Yes. It's from here that all the children come who are born upon others. Each awaits his day. When the fathers and mothers want children, the great doors which you see there on the right are opened and the little ones go down. What a lot there are. And may one talk to them? Certainly. You must make friends. Look, there is one who's more curious than the rest. Go up to him. Speak to him. How are you, Telltale? Hello. How are you, Telltale? Hello. How does he know my name? Come, give me a kiss. And you, t- come, give me a kiss. And you, too, Mickle. It's not surprising that I should know your name, seeing that, that I should know your name, seeing that I shall be your brother. They have only just told me that you were here. They've only just told me that you were here. I was at the other end of the hall packing up my ideas. Packing up my ideas. Tell Mummy that I'm ready. What? Are you coming to us? Certainly. Next year on Palm Sunday. Tell Daddy to mend the cradle. Tell Daddy to mend the cradle. Is it comfortable? Is it comfortable? Is it comfortable in our home? Not bad. Comfortable in our home? Not bad. Comfortable in our home? Not bad. Go. Is it comfortable in our home? Not bad. Comfortable in our home? Not bad. Comfortable in our home? Not bad. What have you got in that bed? What have you got in that bed? What have you got in that bed? What have you got in that bag? Are you bringing us something? I am. What have you got in that bag? Are you bringing us something? I am paying three illnesses. Skylight, are you bringing us something? I am bag. Are you bringing us something? I am paying three illnesses. Skylighting three illnesses. Skylighting three illnesses. Skylighting a hopping cough and measles. Skylighting a hopping cough and measles. Skylighting a hopping cough and measles. Oh, that's all, is it? Oh, that's all, is it? Oh, that's all, is it? And after that, what'll you do? After that? Oh, that's all, is it? Oh, that's all, is it? And after that, what'll you do? After that? Oh, that's all, is it? Oh, that's all, is it? And after that, what'll you do? After that? Oh, that's all, is it? Oh, that's all, is it? And after that, what'll you do? After that? Oh, that's all, is it? And after that, what'll you do? After that? Oh, that's all, is it? And after that, what'll you do? After that? And after that, what'll you do? After that? Oh, that's all, is it? And after that, what'll you do? After that? And after that, what'll you do? After that? Oh, that's all, is it? And after that, what'll you do? After that? And after that, what'll you do? After that? Oh, that's all, is it? And after that, what'll you do? After that? And after that, what'll you do? After that? And after that, what'll you do? After that? I shall leave you. It'll hardly be. I shall leave you. It'll hardly be. I shall leave you. It'll hardly be worthwhile coming. We can't pick you worthwhile coming. We can't pick you worthwhile coming. We can't pick and choose. And choose. And choose. What's that? That's time. 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 And 
choose. Pick and choose. Be worthwhile coming. We can't pick and choose. Pick and choose. What's that? That's time. 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 He is going to open the gates. He is going to open the gates. Governor. Where does that noise come from? Where does an old man who comes to call time? An old man who comes to True. Nothing at all. We have only 100. We have only 20. Enough! Enough! The anchor's raised! What is that? It's not they singing. It sounds like other voices. Yes. It is the song of the mothers coming out to meet them. What are you doing here? Who are you? Why are you not blue? Do not answer. Blue? Do not answer. I have the blue bird. He's hidden under my cloak. Turn the diamond and let us escape. never guess where we are now. No, right, because I don't know. Don't you recognize that wall and the little door? It's the dear old house of your Philef, just a year ago today. What is it, Light? You look quite pale. You look ill. Oh, nothing, child. I feel a little sad because I'm leaving you. Leaving us? Oh, I must. Yeah. The year is over. The fairy is coming back to ask you for the bluebird. But I haven't got the bluebird. The one of the land of memory turned quite black. The one of the future turned quite pink. The nights are dead and I couldn't catch the one in the forest. Is it my fault if they change color or die or escape? We've done what we could. It seems likely that the bluebird does not exist or that he changes color when he's caged. Where is the cage? Here, Master. And now I crave permission to add a few words. Ladies, not we called upon to speak. Order! The uh, malevolent interruptions of a contemptible enemy, of an envious rival... What would bread be without fire? A lump of shapeless and indigestible dough. Order! I won't be shouted down by you, Water. Uh, I Mr. wish, Mr. therefore, in the name of all, to take leave of the two distinguished children whose exalted mission ends today. What? You're bidding us farewell? Are you leaving us, too? Ah, I'm leaving you, but the separation will only be apparent. Come, the... come, the minutes are passing. The hour is at hand which will send us back into silence. Be quick and kiss the children. I first, I first, goodbye, Tilt. Goodbye, little. Goodbye, my darlings. Think of me if ever you want anyone to set fire to anything. Oh, oh, he's burning. Oh, oh, oh he's scorched my nose. Come, fire. Oh. Moderate your transports. Remember, you're not in your chimney. But don't forget me. I'm the friend of man. I shall always be there on the hearth and in the oven. I shall kiss you without hurting you tenderly, my children. I'll take care, you'll get wet. Love the wells, listen to the brooks. I shall always be there. Oh, she's flooded the whole place. I can say no more. My tears choke me and prevent my speaking. It doesn't sound like it. Think of me when you see the cistern in the tap. Is everybody going? Oh, it's still in crying. He's being hurt. Oh, Tyler, Tyler, what is it? What's happened? Oh, oh stop them. There, have you had enough? Do you want any more? There, there, there. Stop, down, Tylo, down, Tylo. Get away from your house, dear. It's the dog, Mrs. Light. He pulled my tail. He beat me, and I've done nothing at all. Nothing at all. Never mind, you've had some, and you're going to have some more. Oh, my poor Tillet, where has he hurt you? Tell me, I shall cry too. Your conduct is all the more unworthy, Tylo, since you have chosen for this disgraceful exhibition the already most painful moment when we are about to part from these poor children. To part from these poor children? Yes, the hour is at hand. We are going to return to silence. We shall no longer be able to speak to them. Oh, no. No, no. I shall always talk. You will understand me, will you not, my little god? Yes, yes, yes. And we shall tell each other everything, everything. And I shall be very good. And I shall never steal anything in the kitchen again. Would you like me to kiss the cat? And you, Tillette, have you nothing to say to it? I love you both as much as you deserve. Now, let me in my turn, children, give you a last kiss. Oh, no, no! no. 
Mike, stay here with us, please. I will tell Mummy. Do not cry, my dear little one. Never forget that I'm speaking to you in every spreading moonbeam, in every twinkling star, in every dawn that rises, in every lamp that is lit, in every good and bright thought of your soul. Listen, the hour is striking. Goodbye. The door is opening. In with you. In with you. Ooh, 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 ooh. You little lazy bones. Aren't you ashamed of yourselves? It has struck eight and the sun is high above the trees. Wake up. Wake up, Tilltill. Mm -hmm. Light, where is she? No, no, don't go away. Light? <laughs> Why, of course it's light. It's as bright as noonday. Mommy, Mommy, it's you. Of course it's I. Who did you think it was? I haven't changed my face since last night. Why do you stare at me in that wonderstruck way? Oh, how nice it is to see you again and how comfortable my bed is. Well, I'm back at home after my journey. What journey? Well, last year. Last year? Well, yes, at Christmas when I went away. When you went away? But you haven't left the room. I put you to bed last night, and here you are this morning. Oh, but you don't understand. It was last year when I went away with Mittel. Oh, dear. What? Well, what in the world are you talking about? Ask Mittel if it isn't true. Oh, we've had such adventures. But, but why ask Mittel? What on earth do you mean? She was with me. We saw Granddad and Granny. With you? You saw Granddad and, and Granny? Yes, in the land of memory. It was oh. on our way. They're dead, but they're quite well. Tilville, have you found the key of the cupboard where, where Daddy hides, hides the brandy bottle? Does Daddy hide a brandy bottle? Certainly. One has to hide everything when one has little meddlesome good-for-nothings like you. Mommy, I don't know where it is. Oh, dear heaven. What is the matter with them, then? Oh, shall I lose them, too, as I lost the others? Daddy, Daddy Till, come quickly. The children are ill. Oh, They're very it? ill. Oh, Daddy. Daddy. Oh, well, what's the matter? They don't look ill. They look very well. Oh, you can't trust their looks. I put them to bed quite quietly last night. And this morning, when, when they woke up, Everything was all wrong. They keep talking about a journey. They've seen light. And Granddad and Granny, who are dead, but who are quite well. But Granddad still has his wooden leg. And oh. Granny, who will the There, do you hear? Oh, run and fetch the dust. Why, quickly. no, no. They're not dead yet. Come, let us look into this. Come in. Well, well, good morning, and a Merry Christmas to you all. It's a fairy berry loon. <sighs> I've come to ask for a bit of fire for my Christmas stew. It's very chilly this morning. Good morning, children. How are you? Oh, very, very, Luna. I couldn't find the bluebird. What? What is he saying? Oh, don't ask me, Madame Dalingo. They've been like that since they woke up. Oh, they must have eaten something that wasn't good for them. Why, Tintil, don't you remember good Berlingo? Your neighbor, Berlingo? Well, yes, ma'am. You are the fairy, Barry Loon. You're not angry with us. Berry? Berry what? Goodness. Gracious me. Barry Loon. Berlingo. You mean Berlingo. Barry Loon or Berlingo as you please, ma'am, but Middle knows. Oh, dear. That's the worst of it. That Middle also. Oh, that will soon go. I'll give them a smack or two. Oh, I know all about it. it. It's only a little fit of dreaming. They must have slept in the moonbeams. My little girl who's very ill is often like oh. that. Oh, by the way, how is your little girl? Oh, only so-so. She can't get up. The doctor says that it's her nerves, and, well, I know what would cure her. She was asking me for it only this morning, for her Christmas box. Yes, yes, I know. It's Tiltil's bird. Well, Tiltil, aren't you going to give it to her at last? What, Mommy? Your bird. It's no use. You don't even look at it now. And she's been dying to have it for ever so long. That's true, my bird. Where is he? Oh, there's the cage. Oh, he's blue. But it's my turtle dove. Much bluer than when I went away. Why, why, that's the bluebird we were looking for. He was here all the time. I'll take down the cage. There, Madame Berlingo. There you are. Oh. He's not quite blue yet, but that'll come. You shall see. Oh. Take him off quick to your little girl. Oh, do you mean it? Oh, I must give you a kiss. I fly, I fly. Yes, yes, be quick. Some of them change their color. I'll come back to tell you what she says. Daddy, Mommy, what have you done to the house? It's just as it was, but it's much prettier. How do you mean, it's prettier? Well, yes, everything has been painted and polished. It wasn't like that last year. Last year? Oh, how happy I feel here. Where's Fred? I say, it's 
Oh, and then here's Tylo. Hello, Tylo. Oh, you had a fine fight. You remember in the forest? And Colette. Oh, he knows me. But he has stopped talking. Oh, fire, he's a good one. He crackles and laughs to make water angry. And water. Good morning, water. What did she say? She still talks, but I don't understand her as well as I did. Oh, Lord, how happy I am. Happy, happy, happy. So am I. So am I. Oh, dear, what are you spinning around for like that? Oh, don't mind them. And don't distress yourself. They're playing at being happy. Oh, how glad I feel. But why? I don't know, Mommy. Come in. Come in. Do you see the miracle? Oh, impossible. Can she walk? Can she walk? When she saw the bird, she jumped just like that with one bound at the window to see by the light if it was really Tiltil's dove. And then whoosh! Out into the street like an angel clasping the dove in her arms. Oh, it was as much as I could do to keep pace with her. Oh, how like light she is. She is much smaller. Yes, indeed, but she'll grow bigger. What are you saying? Oh, haven't they got over it yet? Well, they've done better. It will be all right when they've had their breakfast. Oh, come along, child. Come along. Come and thank Tiltil. Thank you, Tiddle. Is the bird blue enough? Yes, I am so pleased with him. I've seen blue ones, but those which are quite blue, you know, do what you will, you can't catch them. That doesn't matter. He's lovely. Have you had anything to eat? Not yet. What does he eat? Anything. Corn, bread, Indian corn, grasshoppers. How does he eat? With his beak. Here, let me take him. I'll show you. Oh, Mother, he is gone. He flew away and out of the window. Oh, dear. Never mind. Don't cry. I'll catch him again. And if any of you who are listening should find him, would you be so very kind as to give him back to us? We need him for our happiness later on. So we have learned two things, or I hope we have learned two things from Mr. Metterlink's dutiful story. One, that the bluebird of happiness can usually be found close at hand, even if we possess it only for a moment. And the other, that after all, the fun is in the search for happiness as much as in its possession. Next week, we go back to the realistic drama with a ringing clang of jail gates. John Galsworthy's Justice will be the play. Same time, same theater. Today's performance of The Bluebird was produced under the direction of Mr. Joseph Bell, who also adapted the play for radio. Miss Irene Wicker was featured in the three parts of Maternal Love, Granny, and Mummy Till, while Mr. Burns Mantle presided as the commentator. The music was arranged and conducted by Mr. Joseph Hunty. Our distinguished cast included Kingsley Colton as Till Till, Patty Chapman as Mithill, Agnes Moorhead as the fairy, Barbara Weeks as Light, Eric Dressler as the cat, Donald MacDonald as the dog, John McGovern as fire, Ian Martin as bread, Burford Hamden as sugar, Catherine Anderson as water, Ara Gerald as night, Harry Neville as gaffer till, Charles Webster as the oak, Arthur Hughes as time, Winifred Toomey as the willow, Lister Chambers as the ass, and Ted Bergman as luxury. Others included Peter Hughes, Ronald Liss, Lawrence Robinson, Joy Terry, Jeannie Elkins, Renee Terry, and Madeline Pierce. The Great Play series is an educational feature of the National Broadcasting Company. Next week, at this same hour, Justice by John Goldsworthy will be presented. A study manual, part one, giving complete background material for the Great Plays by Blevins Davis, who arranged for the series, is available to our radio audience at the cost of 10 cents. Send coin or money orders to the National Broadcasting Company in care of Great Plays, Radio City, New York. Consult your local library for reading material on the remaining great plays of the series. The Bluebird was a presentation of the National Broadcasting Company, RCA Building, Radio City, New York.